امروز به ذهن شیف من راجع به بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم سلام علیکم سلام علیکم و برکات We are thanking our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us everything and everything that he has given us is perfect. The believer looks at perfection in everything. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, it is perfect. Everything that the nafs touches, it throws us off balance. It becomes imperfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in the most perfect form, in ahsani taqwim. So what makes us fall from that position of ahsani taqwim to the asfal safilin? First, foremost, it is the nafs, it is the ego. Ego does that. The shaitan has no permission to penetrate us if the ego does not give permission. If we give the power to the ego, then it is like the donkey that is riding on us. If we have power over our ego, it is like us riding on the donkey. And the ego has the power of not a donkey, he has the power of the burak that can take us to the highest levels. That is the power of the ego, if you are able to ride. And all prophets came, and all awliya Allah came and still coming to teach this one truth. Ride on your ego. Don't let your ego to ride you. And so, somebody was asking me a question before, and I'm going to say, ask your question again, inshallah. Then we will listen, we will try to find an answer as our Sheikh gives to us. Say. How we can make up what? How, how, uh, how, can we, uh, how can we make uh, our uh, serving services uh, in the first period mm. of our life to other ones in the second period? How can we make his met? Before that, he was asking me the question. It was very. Lengthy, it was very detailed. He is Sheikh and his Wakil from Turkey. Our Wakil. Uh, but now I asked him to ask again on live broadcast, so he became very shy. So suddenly uh, the qu question becomes very short. But he was asking me before, saying, he's listening to Sohbets. And we're always concentrating on the hizmet. Hizmet means service. And the service, it is the most important thing. In our tariqat, in our way, especially in our jamaat. What is service? Service always means others, to help others. Service doesn't mean to help yourself. Your prayer, your fasting, your zakat, you're going to the hajj, all zikr, everything is to help yourself. It is not to help others. But now hizmat is higher than that. Hizmat, as some awliya Allah is saying, is higher than ibadat. And sahabi kiram, they ran to serve the Prophet. They did not run to get higher place in Jannat by themselves. So then he asked me, how are you going to make this hizmat to be priority in your life? Because he said in another sohbet, I've mentioned that there is no balance. 
get this out of your head, out of your heart. Don't think that you're going to balance dunya and ahirat. Don't think that dunya and ahirat can be balanced. Can you balance haq and batil? No. Ahirat is haq. This dunya is batil, isn't it? How you can balance haq and batil, truth and falsehood together? That's why Islam, it is beyond dualism. It's ahad. All others, some stuck in trillism. Some, we got a little bit better, dualism. Two, this or that, light or day, that, 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 that. Thousands of years, chasing around, chasing around. But Allah is ahad. Kul huwallahu ahad. One, move away from dualism to ahad, to unity. Not just to one, but to unity. You understand? No division now. So, asking now, there is no balance, but there is priority. When you have your priority, and when you are priority, it means things that are more important than others. When you concentrate on things that are more important than others, then the others will fall into their own place. Only that time you will find balance. You understand? Only that time you'll find balance. Balance is achieved through priority, and priority is Allah. If you say balance is achieved through 50% Allah and 50% your nafs, then you will never achieve anywhere. You are still chasing after your own tail, circling around and around, you're not taking off nowhere. So now he's asking, how are you going to make now this priority into your life, your hizmat priority? Very simple. It is very simple. Two things you have to have. First, you have to have a sincere intention. Sincere intention. What is that intention? That the work that you are doing, it is for the sake of Allah. I say sincere, because so many can say, oh, I'm doing everything. They're living their life, selfish lifestyle. But they say we're living for Allah. There is a proof for that. The proof is not just by saying, I'm living for Allah, but we're saying, how much are you thinking of Allah? And if you think you are going to do, and once you start doing, you're going to do more. So it's not just by thinking. It is, everything has a proof. The Sahabi Kiram, they proved their whole lives. Our grand sheikhs, the Awliya Allah, the Salihin, they showed. And that proof is in sacrifice. But the murid, the believer, the mu'min, is not going to look at it as sacrifice. It's not as if, oh, I have this and I give it up to Allah. That is also wrong. That is also very selfish. That is also from a very low level. What belongs to you? Nothing belongs to you. It's given to you. Everything that we have from our children to our wealth to our life to our faith, it is a trust, isn't it? It is an emanat. Did we make ourselves to come into existence? Did we make a deal with Allah to say, okay, when I'm created, I want to be a man, not a woman. I want to become a woman, not a man. I want to be white, not black. I want to be yellow, not brown. Did we? No. Everything is given. We do not even control our breath. Correct? And those who think that they can control their breath, they're completely um, empty heads. Who is not controlled by ourselves? Is not controlled by our minds, our brains. It is controlled by the one who gave us breath. Only way you can control your breath 
is when you give your breath back to Him. Now, don't go into, oh, Nakshaban, the order, awareness of breath. You're not even aware how you are breathing when you are making a zikr 10 minutes a day, 5 minutes a day. You're not even watching, not, watching your breath is not just watching how the air goes in, how the air goes out. And, no, 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 it's not. That is still a game. So now, everything is given to us as a trust. And when you give it back to Allah, then you understand now that it did not belong to us in the first place. And astaghfirullah for laying ownership, claiming ownership of it. It is not ours. So, now, how are you going to make that priority? Sincere. Sincerity. Then, sincerity means like you have your glasses. Sincerity means like I'm seeing Chef Andy He's always cleaning his glasses. His glasses are never dirty. Never. But he's always cleaning them. When he takes them out, and he cleans them, he wipes them. That is sincerity. You do something, and you check what you're doing, you're not happy with it. And you do it again. And you do it more beautifully. And you do it again. And you do it again. It is not to achieve perfection. It is not perfection. It is not to make something perfect that is also ego, but to make it more beautiful. And to get rid of those things that is going to make it less beautiful. If you are doing this for the sake of Allah, then that is sincerity. So sincerity is always looking. You make the intention. Look at your intention again. Is the intention correct? Is the action according to the intention? Or are you making one intention, the action is completely different? Majority of Muslims are like that. They say something and they do something else. You make an action. You look at your action. Is that action good? Is it better? Is it better than it was yesterday? Is tomorrow going to be better than today? This is all sunnah. This is putting the hadith and the lifestyle of the Prophet into any work that you're doing. So you look at intention, number one, sincere intention, and the believer is never satisfied because the stations to reach to Allah, it is endless. So the stations of something becoming more beautiful and more beautiful and more perfect and more perfect, this is endless. And he is never satisfied with the work that he has done. So one, sincere intention. This is what? To make the uh, service priority. How are you going to make it priority? Sincerity. Look at the intention now. With the intention is the action together. The second part, always be in consultation. Understand? Because sincerity of intention, sincerity of the action is only you, by yourself, doing things. You're hearing from here, you're hearing from here, you're hearing from here. You're reading this sohbat, you're reading this ayat, you're reading this hadith. And you are going according to your experience, according to your knowledge, according to things that you pick up here and there, according to signs. So everything is coming to you. The second part, it is consultation. Consultation then, it is not from you. It is to someone else, that leader, that guide that you are following then when you are consulting then things will become very easy at that time because you have done everything now when you're consulting he only has to touch up a little bit here a little bit there everything is going to go 
the time you can make your work priority easy. Maybe something very simple that you are doing. So many people, I'm getting sometimes, it's getting so many questions. How are we going to serve Darga? How are we going to serve Darga? And I've been answering it for over three years. At least one week, two questions we're going to have, correct? Always saying, I feel so far away, I feel disconnected. How am I going to serve Darga? I answer. I feel very disconnected, I'm very far. How do I? I answer, I answer. Now, uh, finally, I got one question yesterday. I didn't want to answer directly. He's saying, I'm running to serve. I feel so far away, but I'm feeling I'm serving too much. And I get overwhelmed. So what do I do? <laughs> I says, MashaAllah, you come to that station, huh? And so, once you start consulting, then maybe that guide is going to tell you, take everything and go to this direction. Although you think it's another direction, and you are going according to your understanding, you are not deviating, but now he's going to add something, and you are ready, now you can take off. You make the intention when you wake up, today I'm going to serve Allah. Today I'm going to serve the Prophet. Today I'm going to serve my Shaykh. I went around and these foolish ones, they said, no, you only serve Allah, you don't serve Prophet. Prophet is just a man. You are not servant to Prophet, you are servant to Allah only. You see, you're foolish ones. Uh, everyone is a slave to the system. Everyone slave to their women or slave to the credit cards. And you have a problem with being a servant to Prophet. Who is your guide? Who is saying don't be servant to Prophet? Must be Shaitan. Because Shaitan refused to make sujood, sajda to Adam alayhi salam. There's a meaning for that too. When you make the sajda, what it means. Definitely your role model is not 124,000 Sahabis. All of them. They are beyond saying we are servants to Prophet Laysa to Islam. They say we ransom our children and our parents for you. So that one, ego is shaitanic. Praying five times, may even do zikr and everything, but ego is shaitanic. Because if you cannot obey the Prophet, then definitely you cannot obey Allah. To obey the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what? Obey your rightly guided leaders. Obey your rightly guided leaders. That way you can obey the Prophet. That way you can obey Allah. This is an ayat. But obey your rightly guided leaders. That they are the ones teaching you about Prophet. It doesn't mean you just obey any leader. Those ones is teaching you and bring you closer to the Holy Prophet That way, the connection, it is easy, it is strong. So you make that intention. Then you look at your intention, you look at your action, you consult. Then that time, it can be a million people having million different things that they can do. One can work in a barn, the other one can be a doctor. One can be a king, and the other one can be a road sweeper. They all have work to do in the service of Allah. And that Shaykh must be able to reach to everyone and give to everyone what they need. So, to know your work too. First, of course, you must consult. If your intention is real, you're not just saying, oh, how can I serve, how can I serve? If your intention is real, you must consult. Maybe that one that you're consulting with will say, don't worry. Don't worry about anything. Just take it easy. Maybe he's saying, take it easy. Don't need to do nothing. Maybe he's looking at you and testing you to see if it's really burning inside of you. Can you ever take it easy? It's like someone who has fallen in love. 
He cannot eat. He cannot sleep. Then somebody came, hey, just take it easy. So what is your uh, now uh, connection and sincerity to that request that you make? If it's really bothering you, you'll never take it easy. And if you don't take it easy, maybe that time you are maybe a little bit lost, a little bit in gaflat, you don't know what to do. But that one may say just a simple thing, either through the tongue or sending something through the heart, and you're going to find something so easy. Oh, I can do this. Of course I can do this. So simple. And he's going to concentrate on that. Then he'll be able to be moving in this way, inshallah. As much as enough. Yeah. Yeah, Allah. May our service be accepted. That is another topic. <laughs> yeah, the service that we are going to do is going to be accepted or not. Yeah? May it be accepted. As servants, we do the best. If they accept, they accept. If they don't accept, who are we to say, you must accept, I serve you, you know? <laughs> so many murids, they are like that. They get very upset. They get very upset. For example, if they come and they bring food and say, why is my food not served? Some years, and we're going to see those ones uh, coming back to. I brought cake. You didn't take it out. I must eat the cake <laughs> before they went. Yeah. So what are you bringing the cake for? Oh, for you to eat. That time the chef will say, no, no, don't worry, you eat it. We don't want to eat it. We have no use. Ah, okay, that one has no problem, of course. So we have to wake up to this. Because what we see, we can take a lesson from. And we can actually improve ourselves. <coughs> Inshallah, Rahman. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam. <laughs>